Hi, I'm Adam Kane. I'm one of the producers and the director of Formosa Betrayed. And today we have with us Leslie Hope, who plays Detective Lisa Gilbert. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome, Adam. So, um, tell me how you got involved with the project. <laughs> well, um, the project was very much a part of my life and my household before I became involved in it with, uh, as an actor because my <coughs> husband um, was good friends with the producers, with Dave and Will, and they were talking to him from about uh, moving the project along, and then Adam came on as a director, my great friend Charlie Stratton was one of the writers, Nate Goodman's a good friend too uh, as a writer, so all these people that were near and dear to me were involved before I actually became involved in the show. Um, and I became involved with it specifically because um, you asked me. <laughs> That's why. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, at, at the time I was working <clears throat> on a job um, as a director actually, and in terms of our life, the convenience level was not high for me to do it as well because um, we have a life here in LA and a son, and it was going to be kind of a logistical um, challenge to make it all work. But I was thrilled to have an opportunity to be involved in something that you were doing. So me uh, too. We made it work. <laughs> um, and what did you think about the story? I mean, I know that you knew the story because we had, had talked about it. But what did you think about the script the first time that you read it? Well, I'd, I'd seen various versions of the script going along, and I too am really interested in political thrillers and um, stories that can give you a little insight into what's happening uh, in, in world affairs with, and still be entertaining. Um, I, I was fascinated with that time in history. I know a little bit about Asia, having spent some time over there, but I didn't really know this story at all. So for me, that was interesting. And then, you know, on an entirely personal level, of course, I wanted to do it because you were doing it. I'm just saying it. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Not a downside. Uh -uh, no, win-win. <laughs> And, and was there anything in particular about the time period in the movie, being that it takes place in the 80s, that was particular to your um, your perspective as an actor and, as, and of the character itself that you were tackling? Well, I certainly over the course of my career played cops before, and played like, FBI people and cops and stuff, and women in positions of authority, but what was different about this was because it was, it's hard to believe the 80s are now, period, but because it took place in the 80s, um, it would be a little more unusual for a woman to be um, in the police department and to have as high a rank as I did in the movie. So that was a slightly different thing for it. But, the, but it seemed to me that um, my job was to quite simply sort of move story in the best sense, which was to be the eyes of the audience until James really takes over and takes us overseas. So um, that's what I have to say about that. And what was that like? Working with your husband, directing you. <laughs> Did you ever get a bad piece of direction? Did you ever think, never, well, honey, that's never. Never. <laughs> Did you ever think, well, I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, not, not in terms of directing, no, not at all. <laughs> I didn't ever think that. No, I think you're a good director. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't have done oh, it. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I didn't need your job. I have other jobs <laughs> I could have done. I, um, I wanted to be a part of the movie because I was fascinated with the subject matter, but I also wanted to be a part of something that was important to you, and um, I, I think the movie is an important one to, to be made, but I, no, I don't think, uh, I don't think you ever threw me with any kind of direction, in fact, I think it was more, uh, I was more nervous than I anticipated wanting to do well by you, because I thought it would be, it would be just so embarrassing for you if I screwed the pooch and didn't do a good job, <laughs> so, I felt a little more probably wound up than I might have doing that part in somebody else's movie. Well, there's, there's two a pretty prominent uh, female parts in the movie, Lisa Gilbert and Susan Cain, and uh, there was a lot of discussion early on about what kind of resources we had as a low-budget film going forward, and who we knew, and certainly one of the people that you and I both know is Wendy Cruz, oh, yeah. right. who's a wonderful actress and who, who plays Susan Cain in the movie, and at one point, I think you and I had a discussion about whether or not uh, you would be playing uh, Susan Cain. Yeah, we did. We did actually. I don't remember and, that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I just remember campaigning for Wendy because I thought she'd be so good for it. Yeah, which and, and well, she, she was. She, she is. She's right. a great choice yeah. in the movie, but I don't know if you remember, but we had a conversation about it, and uh, I, I wondered if at any point you had really had any feelings like God, I wish I had got to play Susan Kane, or if you had any uh, uh, feelings like you had really wanted the other part in any way. Well, I, I mean, I, I don't think I thought of it that way because I think Wendy is so. Extraordinary and felt so glad for you that you had Wendy. I just think she's one of the best actresses there is, period. Um, and the the notion of going on a movie where you get to be overseas is always interesting to me. I don't care what the part is. But no, I don't I don't remember thinking that at all. I think it was uh, um, mostly great to be able to come visit in Thailand and um, see what was going on over there and, and not have to do that kind of heavy lifting that Wendy had to do. And she just kicks it, so I can't even imagine that I... 
And that's funny. Did we really talk about this? Yeah, we, <laughs> we really did. Okay. We well, really did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's what I guess. <laughs> okay. Did you have any? Um, did you have any different perspective on seeing the movie completed? Because you were one of the first people to see the movie when it was in its very first rough form. And what was that like for you? Did you? Did because we we arranged the structure of the movie somewhat differently than how the script right. was put together. And um, and do you remember how you? What's your? If you had any feelings about that? I don't think I. I mean, what I what I'm. We had a screening here in the living room, right? With when everybody came over the first time, and I was. Um, well, mostly I was just so proud. Honey. I mean, honestly, I, I mean, I'm not going to pretend that that wasn't my first feeling because it was. I just thought the movie was so terrific, and um, uh, and to have so many people who are important to me involved in, in such key positions—not just you, but like what we said, Wendy and Charlie and Nate, the writers—and um, uh, for me, it, um, I was mostly proud of you, and then proud to be involved with it. I, I then when we saw it with the first time here in L.A. with. Um, huge amount of the audience was part of the Taiwanese American community. That was incredibly moving actually with, with people coming up and um, very emotional uh, thanking all of us, and I'm a small part in all of this, but thanking us for telling their story. And that, that to me I found was um, really one of the more exciting things about being involved in this project. When you see people's uh, just sort of light up by so excited and um, so filled with uh, gratitude to be recognized. So that, for me that was great. Were there any, um, do you have any stories or anything in particular about your time working on the movie that you can share with our audience out there? I don't, you know, I, I had a, a really interesting time when we were shooting in Cook County in the morgue there because it was, you know, of course we were shooting in a real morgue and I um, met up with a, a cop there and uh, she was incredibly uh, gracious and generous with her stories and uh, watching her go through a night and um, have her tell me what her regular day was like working that particular beat that she was. That was a big plus for me during that show. It was Kyle, which was great. Um, and, uh, but I don't, I didn't, I wasn't really around enough to have those sort of wacky film stories that I think you're digging for. Do I have any that I forgot about? I no, forgot the that Cook County to... Morgue was the one I was thinking of actually because we shot in the real Cook County Morgue. There was parts of the morgue that we were not allowed to be in because there were a large number of bodies there yeah, that had not been autopsied. And there was a particular high level of gang violence in the city at that at that point. And in, in, in fact, the night we were there, there was a, as you said, there was there a large number of bodies night. coming in all night long. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just, morgues have a particular feeling, they've got a smell to them, yeah. and it's it's a whole environmental thing that's unlike any other space that I've ever shot in before. Yeah, I've never shot in a morgue before <clears throat> myself, but it was... What I was struck with where, there was the um, the woman who was in charge of the morgue, and I forget her name now, but she, um, she the, the, the police officer was telling me that she insisted that everybody, not just the film crew, but that everybody that was involved with working there must treat these bodies and families with the utmost of respect. So there was no joking around, there was no off-color remarks, there was no disrespect ever allowed to be shown to these bodies, no matter how they'd come in or what had happened to them. And I, I was... Uh, uh, I hadn't considered that that would be sort of the part of the MO of working in a place like that, and it was, and it made it different to be there, I think, for me. Um, and that's true, I remember that, that all night long those bodies were coming in, and, and we were shooting. And then we'd take breaks because, you know, the doors would be slamming through and here comes somebody else. And I think it seems to me that at that particular night, there were like 11 or 12 people came through that night that had died that night. Yeah, yeah it was intense. Well, thank you for joining us. On that happy note. <laughs> On that thrilling, upbeat note. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, for Most of Betrayed is in theaters on February 26th. Uh, next up, we're going to have costume designer Karen Wagner that will be talking to Will Tiao. Um, thank you for joining us. You're welcome, honey. Bye.